So welcome. My name is Barbara McDermott. I am founder of Shift Formula. Uh, Shift Formula is the <clears throat> outcome of my search for a solution for our daughter. Our daughter, when she was 16 years old back in 2008, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's an autoimmune disease. However, her ability to maintain who she had been prior to her diagnosis was overwhelming. Cut to the chase, she developed incessant, intrusive thoughts of food. I'm talking cravings where she just couldn't control her eating. She was in that situation where socially, friends and family are just enjoying meals. I call it the CECs, the Carefree Eater Club, right? When everything's just kind of working out for others, but not for you. With tears in her eyes, at the end of her rope, she had said, Mom, I wish I never had to eat again. Do any of you ever feel that way? One of my shift clients just recently said those exact same words to me this past Tuesday night. We understand intimately and have great empathy for anyone out there who battles, struggles, has any kind of fight with food or food-related conditions. You know, metabolic syndrome or all the related lousies from fibromyalgia to heart disease, even cancer, obesity, insulin resistance, chronic pain, Alzheimer's, our type 3 diabetes, right? And of course, diabetes. All of these are interrelated and they all have a common thread and that's insulin. In our community, we talk about being insulin intelligent and glucose aware. But for tonight, we're gonna to look specifically at intermittent fasting. Now, if someone had said to me, you know, why don't you try some intermittent fasting? I'd be like, uh, yeah, talk to the hand, not gonna happen on my watch. There's no way in the world I would fast. Are you kidding me? I had been a grazer, meaning I ate like every two hours, constantly grazing on organic, you know, plant-based kind of foods. The idea of intermittent fasting sounds painful. In fact, I'll share this with you. I'm a group fitness instructor. My husband and I, we owned a chain of health clubs and then a gigantic complex right outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have sold our interest in that and now are doing this full time helping individuals rise up out of their health chaos and restore themselves to who they're meant to be. But this idea of um, intermittent fasting, there's no way I could have done that because fitness world is on these days. See, I stay certified as a group fitness and take certifications and all that. But just take a look at this. Now, I'm all... I'm all for some blueberries. Not, that's not the point. But of course, it's plant-based. But the latest kick for group fitness instructors is to become a behavior change, a behavior change specialist. You know what that means? That means that they want you to change your behavior. They want you to hire them so that you no longer behave the same way you used to around food. Nutrition and behavior change are the two big buzzwords. Well, my buzzword is, okay, I don't think anybody needs to change their behavior around food. I would just like to teach people how to forget to eat. How freeing would that be? As my daughter stood in front of me and the tears were coming down her cheeks and I had no solution. <laughs> I had no idea what to do. We tried the pH balanced miracle diet. We tried, of course, the organic whole plant food based, you know, that whole protocol the no white foods, the green drinking. Oh, we did our green drinks. Yes, we tried all of these wheatgrass shots. Nothing worked. We didn't, we didn't have the answer, but we, we have since discovered that we can actually put a spell on ourselves. You can put a spell on yourself and actually forget to eat. How freeing would that be to be released be released from the control of food, going for hours, not thinking about what meal is coming next. Having not only energy to spare, but actually brain power to spare that can be put on tasks and productivity rather than figuring out what the next food 
fix is going to be. Well, the whole concept of putting that spell on you has to do with this one hormone, and it's insulin. When we understand how to manipulate, manage, curtail, suppress our body's release of insulin, we gain this freedom. I know Ernest is here, I see. There's a bunch of us in our community. We just forget to eat because the cravings are crushed almost instantaneously. Because Think about this. Would there be anybody in this world today struggling with a weight-related condition like the ones we mentioned, would we have any problem with food if we didn't have cravings? Uh, hallelujah, hell, no, right? No way. It's the cravings that unraveled my daughter. It's the cravings that might be unraveling you. It's the cravings that unraveled my shift insiders, but no longer is it an issue. And we still eat, yeah. We just don't crave. There's a big difference, big difference. So once your cravings are crushed and then hunger just regulates, you literally go for hours without thinking about food. That is freedom. That's not behavior change. That's understanding our body kind of metabolically, not nutritionally. There's a big difference. Nutritionalism just talks about all the different uh, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and yeah, there's a value, but nutrition is a subset of health and metabolic and endocrinological manifestations and path pathways that go on. Okay, so understanding insulin is key. So the enticement here is that, yes, you too, like me, like my shift insiders, like my daughter now, who's lost 40 pounds, kept it off because she's not hungry and she certainly doesn't have those cravings anymore. Okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of what actually happens. And we're, don't, don't worry, at the end, don't forget, you can download this full guide. This is what our Shift Insiders use, a full guide on fasting, how to do it, why to do it, okay? That's with the link. And also, um, we will get into actually how to do it. But let's look at why, okay? We know how good it will feel to forget to eat, not have cravings. That sounds good, sign me up already, right? But let's talk about what happens when we're not eating. So fasting historically was used for spiritual pursuit perhaps, right? Or vision quests. I think about native peoples who are looking for that opportunity to kind of connect with, with their higher power source, right? So, and fasting is also used in historically for sicknesses. And we're going to understand why when we go through this list. So fasting technically means we're not eating for a period of time, right? Intermittent fasting means we do it kind of once a day, right? Uh, just human-wise, when we were primal beings, you know, out hunting and gathering, we feasted and fasted naturally because we had to chase down our dinner, right? So we had a big feast, but we could go for a long period of time with not eating. So things kind of just solved themselves, didn't they? And then we get to the industrial and the agricultural revolution. Now we have, you know, farms and foods in boxes and packages. So food is kind of at the ready. But our great grandparents also fasted every day because they would close the kitchen kind of when it got dark, definitely by eight o'clock at night. Then they sleep all the way through the, through the nighttime, right? And when they wake up, they're going, usually don't have their breakfast till later because they have chores to do in the morning. So they went for a good 12 to 16, 18 hours without eating. That's a fast. That's why, and you probably already know this, but that's why we use the word break fast, breakfast. We just, we're just breaking the period of time when we're sleeping with having a meal. But you know what? The breakfast as they say on television, is the most important meal of the day. Mm -hmm. Actually, what we eat for our breaking fast will determine whether we're going to crave all day or whether we're going to forget to eat all day. I'll take the second one, please. Right? Yeah. So fasting historically just means going for periods of time without eating. How we want to do that is up to us. But on a biological level, 
whether we're fasting for vision quests, we're fasting for religious purposes, we're fasting for uh, health resolution, we're fasting because we feel like it, or we're fasting because we're just not hungry, or something worse, like we're in a prisoner of war, or, you know, lousy, scary situations. The same biological variable is this. Insulin level drops way down low. Why would insulin levels drop way down low when we're fasting? Well, insulin responds to one stimuli and you know what it is, don't you? It's blood sugar. You know, 90% of the foods that we eat are blood sugar. As soon as they go in our mouth and down into my stomach and start digesting, they break down. And they break down into their most basic fundamental building blocks. Fatty acids break, I mean, fats break down to fatty acids, proteins break down to amino acids, and every carbohydrate, every plant on the planet, and just about every processed food out there is a carbohydrate. And all of that breaks down to sugar. It's called glucose. That's why we shift and sires talk about being glucose aware. There's no food off limits when we understand food's limits on our body's ability to achieve its desired outcome. Input directly creates an output. And blood sugar, meaning, you know, we, t we tend to say this, oh, that food doesn't impact my blood sugar. That food does impact my blood sugar. Actually, all food is blood sugar. It's just sugar on the table, <laughs> then it becomes sugar in, in me, right? Blood sugar. So the cells of our body can't access that energy. It's fuel. Unless insulin hormone triggers that signal and your cells open and let the sugar in. That's why insulin spikes or rises or elevates when we eat a meal, especially when there's a lot of carbohydrate in the meal. The more carbohydrate in the meal, the higher the insulin rise. The lower the carbohydrate in our meal, the lower the insulin rise. Okay, that sounds cool and all. What's this big thing about insulin? Well, insulin, good grief, not only is our blood sugar lowering hormone, only because it doesn't cancel blood sugar out, it just opens the cells of our body and allows the sugar to move from the bloodstream into the cells to be used for energy. But insulin is also our fat storage hormone. Now it gets interesting, doesn't it? How many of us, and I know a zillion, not a zillion, but many, many people having been in the health club industry, how many of you have exercised every day, watched what you ate, right? And still can't lose what's what we're carrying around our middle. Anybody? That was my daughter. Good grief. Talk about punishment, self-loathing, the blame and shame game, the wagging of the fingers and the nutritionists and the dietitians and some of the doctors out there. Are you getting enough exercise? Are you watching what you eat? Are you counting your calories? Got to use portion control. Do they ever tell you that you got to get this insulin down? Because guess what? When insulin levels are elevated, the fat burning enzyme that's needed to metabolize fat, it doesn't get produced. So your body is disabled completely unable to access the fuel you're carrying, okay? So insulin is all about fat storage. And even so much, we can say lockdown. When insulin levels are elevated, you are unable to access your body fuel, which is body fat for use. Also important to realize that the sugar from the foods that we chose because we're told to eat more plants, eat more fruits, eat more grains, whole grains, okay? That's a whole lot of blood sugar. That's a whole lot of insulin that we could handle when we were 12 and our bodies are always moving, right? Now that 57, 58 years old and our body's slowing down, we don't need that much energy. We are over fueling and not even realizing it. Because if my cells, even though insulin's a knocking, telling the cells to open up and let the blood sugar in, my cells, your cells, have a capacity load. They have enough sugar in them. They become resistant to insulin's signal. Isn't that interesting? Our body has a built-in protection mechanism against sugar. 
glucose, all carbohydrate. Built-in protection mechanism. So our body starts producing more insulin, more fat storage, more lockdown. And when insulin is at present, overly present, and it probably is if you've, been, if you've been grazing like we had been and my daughter was struggling with, the extra blood sugar that our body doesn't need, it goes and converts to fat. We say waste weight is mostly carbohydrate brought to you by insulin. That's why I call it the insulin belt. We know how, to some degree, how present insulin is in our lives by our waistline. Now, insulin's also involved with the pathway that sugar must be addressed in our body. If it can't get to our cells to be used, okay, okay, we're gonna make some fat out of it. The cells around our middle are exquisitely sensitive to in insulin, that adipose tissue, so we tend to pack on the pounds of fat here. It was sugar converted to fat. Remember, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. We can't, we don't store sugar except for some glycogen in our muscles, some glycogen in our liver, resource for brain use, but that's not a whole lot. Our body stores fuel as fat, which is really powerful fuel. We just haven't been able to tap into it. But our body will also do a third thing with extra sugar. You think about sugar being corrosive and rough, right? Our body will kind of dilute it, diffuse it. It gets distributed all over our body. And then those sticky proteins, excuse me, sticky molecules of sugar, glucose, will actually adhere to proteins all over our body. This is how I develop joint inflammation and pain. They're called AGEs, advanced glycated end products. That's how we age. Fat burners age slower than sugar burners. So when it comes to getting insulin down, that's when fat burning can happen. Insulin levels are elevated. It's not happening. Despite exercising every day, you'll be trapped in that sugar burner. Your body will actually waste muscle. Turn that to sugar. Yes. Do you believe our body can turn proteins, muscle, gluconeogenesis, the creation of new sugar from protein? This is why we, it's called muscle wasting. Fat burners don't muscle waste. Sugar burners do muscle waste. They stay in that sugar thing because insulin's elevated. When insulin, when insulin is elevated, it's all about taking care of the sugar. Insulin down, whoo. Now I can, we call it dining in. That's what I can dine in on my body when insulin levels are down. Those of you with a degree of insulin resistance, it takes some time to get that insulin down. But hey, when cravings are gone and you're not as hungry, it all works. Okay. So let me open this board up real quick. Make sure we can keep moving. So now we know why it's so powerful to get insulin down. And that is the power variable for intermittent fasting. When you are fasting, going for hours pleasantly, not eating because you forgot to eat. It's real, it's a thing, we do it. This is the variable that locks in your ability to dine in. Remember, when we say we wanna lose weight, we don't really wanna lose weight. Let's say I want to lose some weight. We really don't want to lose weight. I don't want you to lose muscle. I don't want you to lose bone density. I don't want you to lose your hair. I don't want you to lose your mind. Okay. So really what we're trying to do is lose what? We want to get rid of excess body fat, right? We want to, we want to get rid of body fuel. So we want to lose some body fat is what we're saying, right? But here's the thing. No one can lose body fat. What do you have to do? It just gets lost? You think it melts? If I eat bacon, if I eat butter, then it melts my body fat? What we have to do is be able to use up that body fat. And we can't use the body fat when insulin is elevated. Insulin's gotta be down for the fat burning enzymes to be produced, for my fat cells to be open and accessible. So no one loses weight. We've got to be able to use our weight.
And that's what intermittent fasting is all about. Okay, so that's a little diversion there. So when insulin's down, here's all the power. We talk about being powerful because guess what? <laughs> when you start shifting, if you decide to join us, we're a cool crowd. When you begin shifting, weight loss, believe it or not, becomes secondary. Mm -hmm. All these other awesome things occur. Well, first of all, being free of cravings, hallelujah. That's freedom right there, right? Because that blood sugar rise, insulin release, blood sugar drop is done. Over. Thing of the past. But there is a powerful mechanism. I call it your superpower. Your body is incredibly made. You've probably heard this autophagy. You guys are smart. You're seekers. Just validating here, sharing information. Autophagy is the human body's built-in cellular cleansing system. You know, the world says, I'm doing a cleanse. I'm doing a detox. Drinking my drinks. Okay. They're actually not fasting because they're drinking carbohydrates usually. Okay, that's cool. Everyone has their own path. However, autophagy only occurs when insulin drops way down low. So cell renewal, cleansing and detoxing, you don't need juices to do that. Your own body does it for you. Your own body does it for you, okay? And when autophagy is turned on, meaning I'm in cellular renewal, actually autophagy means self-consumption. But yeah, we talk about dining in, you start consuming, your body consumes parts that are malfunctioning okay parts of a cell so if parts of a cells are malfunctioning wouldn't we have to create new parts yes we would so your body i'm going to put autophagy is up your body will have an uptick in this hormone production anyone recognize that one from all the ads about anti-aging and longevity human growth hormone is actually in an uptick when we're not eating doesn't that sound like something you want to jump into? Yes, it does. So human growth hormone helps to replace the parts that were faulty, our body got rid of, generating new parts. It helps to keep muscles strong, bone density, all your structural pieces. Yeah, we definitely want an uptick, especially we're in our 50s, 60s, 70s and up, right? We want that human growth hormone to always be in amped up production definitely a good thing. So that's another plus. But during this autophagy, we talk about cell parts. Have you heard of this word? Apoptosis. That is total. So, you know, autophagy is talking about like pieces of cells, you know, being cleansed. Apoptosis is when a cell is malfunctioning. Something's off whether a toxin or environmental poison or some kind of DNA change went on. When a cell notices, talk about, talk about floating intelligence inside this body of ours, right? When it senses that it is malfunctioning, this is cell suicide, cell suicide. And it's actually the anti-cancer mechanism that's built in our body. A cell that turns cancerous was a healthy functioning cell at one time because something went off. Something's misfiring. It's, it's, it's an unchecked growth mode. This is why fasting is so powerful for an, as an anti-cancer development action in the first place or if I'm in the middle of a cancer situation. We have a number of shift insiders who are in that position. And they're implementing this intermittent fasting to assist with, first of all, not overly fueling a cancer cell, because most cancer cells really do. They're greedy and they're greedy for glucose. Yeah, they're crafty and can feed on a lot of things, but we can significantly curtail that at the ready fuel, right? So that's another powerful mechanism that's turned on. So we're talking about weight loss. But then we're also talking about being in our body's health boss, right? And the boss of the body is what? It's this brain, right? During intermittent fasting, we also have an uptick in this. I love my acronyms. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. 
that's just a lot of words. It just means kind of like the miracle grow for our brain. Anyone wishing to avoid Alzheimer's? Anybody want to dodge dementia? Uh, yeah, sign us all up for that. You know, we're calling that type three diabetes because again, it has to do with insulin and blood sugar or glucose. That's what develops Alzheimer's. So not having elevated insulin because we have elevated blood sugar actually elevates this positive thing that our brain secretes itself. So every time we go through periods of time where we're not eating for a couple hours and we accumulate more and more of those, and then we get so comfortable that they get longer. We have an uptick in a brain, not only protective mechanism, but a brain regeneration and growth mechanism. This is how we avoid those brain degenerative conditions. Intermittent fasting. You know, I say sometimes, and I mean it with great empathy, but if you know someone who's struggling with any of the metabolic situations, we need to start saying to each other, you know what, I'm going to not eat with you. Together, we're going to not eat. And I'm being a little silly about it. Yeah. But to be able to help somebody stop eating for a period of time to have all of this positive stuff triggered on inside their body. You know, we don't even realize how powerfully we are made. So yeah, the enticement is you can forget to eat. You can crush cravings. You could go tomorrow or the next day and have that aha moment like every shift insider has experienced and say, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I actually forgot to eat lunch. Not making it up. This is what happens to us. And I'm going to tell you why it happens and how you can make it happen for you. So here's all that science behind why intermittent fasting is so powerful. And it all comes down to keeping getting insulin levels down low. Okay. Yeah, we could go into a whole discussion of how insulin is actually one of the big culprits behind why cancer is able to grow so quickly. Insulin is also the culprit behind why blood vessels begin thickening. Okay. Insulin is non-negotiable. You, know, you have to have insulin all the time. But boy, we have been so misled with our nutritional directives to eat such a carbohydrate lopsided diet and then to be grazing all day, we never get a break from insulin. We are in an insulin dominant state like all day long. And then if we're eating into the night like this guy used to, getting up in the middle of the night for a bowl of cereal or whatever I was doing, my body never had a break from insulin. It's not a wonder I was developing on a muffin around my middle and aches in my joints. And I was always hungry. My daughter was crying. Not anymore. Not anymore for you either. Okay. So the, what is the what is the most excuse me? What is the most badass thing you can do? What can you do to make your nutritionist or dietitian cry? That F is in isolation, it's in math brackets, right? It means it sits by itself. This is what I use to describe fat in isolation. That means consuming fat without anything else around it. No protein, no carbohydrate, just fat. Now think about it. We can be scared of fat. I was afraid, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm gonna eat fat? You gotta be kidding me. I avoided fat for decades. We were the low fat, healthy whole grain, fruits and vegetable family, right? Until we went down crashing hard, crashing hard. So this concept of fat and isolation, but let's think about this. Carbohydrate stimulates insulin 100%. Protein stimulates insulin about 50%. Or less depends upon how much we don't. You don't. We don't need to go chasing protein. We all. We are all just fine with our protein. Okay. 
But fat, how much does fat stimulate insulin? Goose egg. Wait a minute, fat doesn't stimulate insulin. Insulin has to be down low for body fat burning to be a go. Okay. If the carbohydrate was stimulating insulin and creating a fat storage lockdown, so burning body fat was completely disabled, maybe I'll be a badass that the doctors and the nutritionists and the dietitians are telling me and my fitness trainer who wants to change my behavior. <laughs> Talk about changing your behavior. I want you to try fat in isolation. And the fat you choose is going to have to be healthful fats because you can only choose fats that are completely just by themselves as a fat. You know, we're not talking about trans fats that are mixed up in packaged and processed foods that are made in a factory because that would have carbohydrate attached and protein attached. The fats that are just by themselves are things like coconut oil and grass-fed butter. The reason I pull those two up, because I have those two every single morning and still do, and then seven years in. So when we consume fat in isolation, that, everybody, is the secret of the century. That is the antidote to your cravings. That is what will lead you to forget to eat. That is what will trip you into intermittent fasting without even realizing it. That is what will get you to the place where you say, like my shift in ciders, I forgot to have lunch. <laughs> I forgot to have lunch. Score, right? Do that again and do it again and do it again. And what happens to this excess fuel I've been carrying and accumulating all these decades? I use it up. We dine in. So fat in isolation would be something as simple as a cup of coffee. And if you're not a coffee drinker, consider becoming one. I'll say that. Some of my shift insiders are like, I'll never have coffee, Barb. I'm like, okay, give it some time. It's just a vehicle for fat, people. Just a vehicle for fat. Okay, that's how we look at foods. To get ourselves out of crisis. Does this mean I'm not going to enjoy my Thanksgiving meal with my family? No. I have traditions too. But understanding this is the way out of our challenge. We shift just the way we eat daily and life becomes ours again. So coffee, you're going to put a tablespoon of butter. Sorry, my board is a little bit unstable. Okay. Now that butter ideally is grass fed. Why does it have to be? What does that mean? Grass fed butter. Butter doesn't eat grass. Okay. Well, butter comes from cows, right? From the milk and it gets churned and whipped up. We want cows eating what they were intended to eat. They're grazers. They're grass eaters. They're not grain eaters, right? A lot of our factory produced foods will hyper force feed animals for faster return. But the milk and then the butter is compromised. It's just not normal, okay? A grass-eating cow makes really healthy, fat-dense butter. It's delicious. One of my favorite products is Kerry Gold. So you're gonna put a tablespoon of butter, I know, wait for it. You're also gonna put a tablespoon of coconut oil. Coconut oil, has some fantastic fatty acids, short chain, long chain, and medium chain. Medium chain triglycerides, they're called, or fatty acids are really powerful because when we eat those medium chains, now there's a bunch of different fats in coconut oil, but these medium chains go straight to our liver, our body metabolizes it. And cool thing is when we're burning sugar in our old days, we're spitting out free radicals, which is very aging and damaging, right? When you start burning fat with our Shift Insider community, guess what happens when we burn fat? We get clean power energy molecules called ketones. That's where the whole keto craze comes from. Your body makes ketones, everybody. You don't have to take powders. <laughs> Your body makes them. So the coconut oil is going to give you that little bit of a lift in your step.
So you're going to put about one tablespoon of each of these, okay? And you could even do two of the coconut oil. Try it out. See what you think. But start with one if you'd like. We have a few other tricks up our sleeves with our insiders that are a little bit too difficult to explain in this kind of a platform, but starting here is a great place to go. Now, when you put those into your coffee, you can't just stir it. It's got to be on a high, high speed metal blender, like a bullet or a ninja or a neutral bullet, and it will froth up like something maybe you would get in a European cafe. I've never been, but every morning I feel like I am in Europe because this delicious beverage keeps this gal frisky and focused and productive for hours. What time is it now? 7.37, I've been going since 5.30 this morning. Making contact, contact, making content, you know, coaching in clients, talking with some doctors, having classroom sessions, and now putting this on at the end of my day. And I even haven't even had a meal yet today because I'm just not hungry. I am powered on the fuel that I'm carrying. Seven years in, I'm what they call fat adapted. I know it sounds a little bit foo-foo, but my body literally is very well adjusted to utilizing the fuel that I carry on my frame. This is why I don't have to worry about gaining weight ever again. I know how to dine in. By taking fat in isolation in my morning coffee, I set myself up. Remember I was talking about breaking the fast Whatever we have for breakfast sets us up either for craving, if it's a carbohydrate-based you know, meal, but if it's a fat-based meal, I'm setting myself up to run on fat. Not just the fat that I eat, but the fat that's my meat on my body, okay? So putting that in first thing in your day, I advise for the intermittent fasting when you wake up in the morning, you hydrate with water. You can put some lemon, a little bit of sea salt into your water, drink some clear tea or any other clear beverage that you like. Wait until you're good and hungry. I'm talking not craving, but hungry. Now the first day might be a little fisticuffs, right? But it'll happen. Put this coffee, this fat in isolation in. Sip on that coffee. You'll notice because there's no sweetener, there's no protein in there. It's not the kind of beverage that you guzzle down, right? Many, many, I know I, I was, I was, can I have some coffee with that creamer? <laughs> you know, I was a big creamer with a little bit of coffee way back when, when I was struggling with pain and weight gain. But I realized the power of this, this will set you up, okay? And then some of the other foods you can lean on are in your guidelines. Where did I put those? Hello. Okay, your intermittent fasting guidelines are right here. And I have a list of the foods you can use. We here in our community, every month, we do a community fast. I call it our fasting circle because when you're fasting with friends, <laughs> fast with friends, there's an accountability and a team energy and camaraderie that really can't be mimicked if you're doing it by yourself. And we get together every day. We share ideas, give each other high fives. The first timers are skeptical and nervous and we assure them they'll be okay and we get them through. It's really powerful. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we do, as you'll see in the manual, what we call a fat fast. We use some foods to keep us going. That's our other secret. I say we're doing intermittent fasting and I say, but the secret is that we actually eat some things, but we eat foods that don't trigger insulin. You see, we can get all the benefits of fasting, but we kind of mimic the fast because we eat to stay compliant. We eat enough fat-focused feedings to keep us not hungry, to keep us going not eating. It's about getting the measure, expand it between each feeding where the fasting happens and insulin's down low, bat, body fat burning is a go, and all those things we've on the board are also a go. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have some food as needed. Tuesday and Thursday, we strive, we set a goal for just a liquid day. And it's all inside your manual. But what's not inside your manual is that concept of fat in isolation, okay? But here's the thing, you shouldn't be in isolation. You should be connected to a group who's doing the exact thing that you desire to do. 
We all want a cravings-free life. We all want to forget to eat at times. We all want to be free once and all for all from the control that food has had over us. We all want to be seen, heard, and understood for the struggle that we are going through. Shiftformula.com is our community. I invite you with open heart and yes, to go to shiftformula.com. You go to the navigation bar, okay? On that navigation bar, you will see the word programs. Okay. In that, hit that programs button. Okay. You notice how that we use the word shift? It's not turn. It's not detour, it's not end, it's not eliminate, it's not supper, <laughs> it's not diet, that's for sure. It's certainly not a diet. We just shift our focus, like that badass thing I told you to do, to do the exact opposite of what everyone's been telling you to do. That fat and isolation is your way out. And once you shift your focus on food through the lens of keeping insulin low, your body shifts from sugar burner cycle of insanity, cravings and free radical production to body fat burning, ketone generating, anti-cancer, fibromyalgia, Alzheimer's, not on your list. Mm -mm. And you'll be dining in while forgetting to eat. It's powerful. So shiftformula.com, go to the programs, you'll look down and you'll see you have an option. You'll work directly with me and you have an opportunity to get into our classrooms. I hold daily classrooms. Here's our November schedule. We don't just talk about metabolic health, like what am I gonna eat? What am I not gonna eat? We also talk about what's between our ears. You know, our mindset, our ability to manage stress and cortisol, our ability to trust the universe, to be calm, to be even keeled and focused, to navigate life's curveballs, because we're gonna have curveballs. So we talk metabolic health, we talk mental health, I call it metabolic because it's a combination. Do you know that the thoughts you think can actually trigger your liver to raise your blood sugar and you'll have another insulin response? Good grief. It seems like we're all set to fail, but we're actually not. We use intellect to override emotion and we understand the metabolic power over and supersedes any nutritional directives. We can eat however we choose, morally, consciously, sustainably, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, carnivore, whole, whatever. Just putting the science on top of all that and seeing how it operates is your power. Your power is the difference between thinking and knowing. Thinking and knowing. Knowing wins every time, right? It's always the smartest one in the room who wins. That's you. So you'll work with me directly, shiftformula.com. Go to programs you choose. Couple sessions with me, a lot. Somewhere in between, it's up to you. And here's the power. If you join today or by tomorrow, you're gonna to get it. Our next intermittent fasting circle begins on Monday. That's November 18th, I think. Am I right, Ernest? November 18th. So every day we'll be meeting. And I'm telling you, we've had some shifters jump in in the past and they jumped right into the intermittent fasting week. And boy, did they get off running. But here's the thing. You know where we are right now? Right now as I'm actually recording this webinar, we're in that place. I call it the six week span. Actually, my husband calls it that because this is the six week span where we tend to gain the majority of our yearly weight increase. Thanksgiving through to New Year's Day. The weight gain is subtle. It's insidious. It creeps up on us. The best way to defend ourselves against that is a strong offense. So to be able to put intermittent fasting in at will, whenever you choose to do it, that is your superpower. 
Okay, that's a wrap for today. Again, go to shiftformula.com. We are a friendly and supportive and diverse group. You know, I was just talking to one of my new shifters, a great guy up in Vermont, great guy. He said to me today, as we, he was, we were doing our client call, he said, I cannot believe, I would never have believed or imagined that it would have happened this fast. He's already dropped 15 pounds in just about a week or so, okay? I never would have believed it could happen this fast or this pleasantly. He has been addicted to carbohydrates for as long as he can remember. He cannot even recall a time in his adult life that he didn't have incessant urges to be eating. He says, for the first time in my life that I can remember, I'm not having cravings. But when I sit down to have my meals, my mouth waters. He said, that's a different thing for me. I'm actually hungry. Different from craving, I'm actually hungry. And he's outside working a lot. And he takes care of a lot of young people. And he said, you know what happened the other day? I looked at my watch and it was two o'clock and I thought, wow, I haven't even eaten lunch yet. And then two more hours went by and he's doing major work. He says, I moved an entire pile of, you know, these two by fours, these long boards. It's just like a lot of grunt work. He says, normally I would have had like four different pantry stops to make that happen. His pain is gone. Chronic pain, gone. Cravings gone. Weight going. But with no pain and no sacrifice, that's the power. Forgetting to eat, it's a thing and you can win. Okay, that's it for a wrap. I'm going to close right now. If you have any questions, I'll hang for a moment or two in case a question comes in. But remember to download your free gift from yours truly. That's me. Everything I share with you is gleaned from my incessant and obsessive Need to know. I needed to know how to help my daughter restore her sense of self worth. The loathing and despair doesn't have to be. It's science. Your body has the ability to thrive, and you deserve to be restored. Because guess what? You have a purpose on this planet. And you're not going to be able to get it done if you're worried about what the next snack is or you're being belittled or controlled by food. Good grief, right? So let me help you help others. It's a ripple. We drop it in. There's a first tier and it just ripples out. The cool thing is we find as I shift insiders is that many of us come in for ourselves. Well, we all come in for ourselves, right? But as soon as our shift starts to happen, you know what happens, don't you? The people in your first circle, coworkers, friends, family, they're watching and then they're curious. And then they ask for help too. And then you pay it forward. That's how it's been happening. Okay, once again, this is Barbara McDermott, founder of Shift Formula. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I appreciate you allowing me to share with you what I have learned that has helped me, my family, my daughter, and the countless clients who I call dear friends and family in our shift community feel better, be better. Okay, I'll look for you inside.